Welcome to the Christian Perspective Channel, a place for people to learn the Word of God, the Bible. I have no affiliation with any organization in this world. My affiliation is with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who guides all believers into all truth. If you want a fearless, truth-seeking Bible study with no agenda other than learning the truth of God's Word, then this is the place for you. Welcome aboard. Thanks for joining the Christian Perspective channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing. So the word quickly spread all over Egypt that Joseph's brothers were here and that he was sending them home to get his father. And the Pharaoh heard of it. And the Pharaoh told Joseph, send wagons and, and bring all these wagons full of goods to your father and go get him and you can use the wagons to bring all of, of his stuff back to Egypt and all of Egypt is yours to help your family. So Joseph didn't go with them. He sent his brothers back to go get their father Jacob. And when they showed up with all these wagons full of food and clothes and all kinds of riches. And they told him everything that had happened. He didn't believe it at first. But when he saw all the wagons, then he started to believe it. And his spirit was revived. And then all of a sudden, he becomes Israel again. And Israel said, See, ever since he lost Joseph, his name was Israel, but he reverted back to being Jacob. And now he's heard Joseph is alive, and he's Israel again, and his spirit is, revo is revived. And he said, my son is alive. I will go to Egypt and see him before I die. Beginning in Genesis chapter 46, when Jacob was on his way to Egypt, Israel stopped in Beersheba to offer a sacrifice to the God of his father Isaac. I guess Jacob had some concerns because God told Isaac, don't go to Egypt. And Jacob was probably wondering, should I go to Egypt or not? And God spoke. We're going to go through this later about Israel, Jacob, Israel, Jacob. But God said, Jacob, Jacob, do not be afraid to go into Egypt, because there I will make you a great nation, and I will bring you out again. And your son Joseph will place his hand on your eyes, meaning that Joseph will be there when he dies. And so Jacob went into Egypt with his whole family, his children and their wives and their children, and there were 70 of them all together that went into Egypt with Jacob. And when Jacob got to Egypt, Joseph came out to meet him in Goshen. And jo Joseph said to Jacob, when you meet Pharaoh, and Pharaoh asks you, what is your occupation? Don't tell him you're a shepherd, because shepherds are an abomination to the Egyptians. Tell him you're a cattle herder, because uh, Jacob had sheep and cows. Now, beginning in Genesis chapter 47, Joseph went to meet the Pharaoh, and he had five of his brothers with him. And the Pharaoh asked them, what is your occupation? And they said, we are shepherds, just like our forefathers before us. And the Pharaoh said, well, that's good. If they're skilled, then they can take care of my cattle also. So the Pharaoh had no problem with it. Joseph then brought Jacob to meet the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh asked him, how old are you? And Jacob said, a hundred and thirty years have been the days of my pilgrim, pilgrimage on this earth. The days have been few and evil. 
not as many as the days of my fathers in their pilgrimage. And then Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So they settled in Goshen. And as the famine went on and Joseph, the people ran out of money to buy corn and the Egyptians. And so Joseph started accepting cattle as payment. And the Egyptians were selling their cows to Joseph for corn. And eventually their cattle ran out. And then Joseph started buying their land for corn. And eventually they ran out of land as well. And Joseph moved them into the cities. And then he told the people in the land to that um, he will make them servants of Pharaoh and he will give them seed to plant in the land and he will take a fifth of everything that they harvest as a tax and four-fifths shall be for them to reseed and to feed their cattle and they accepted that and they thought that was a good deal because as they said you have saved our lives and the only ones who owned land after that were the priests of Egypt because of a law that um, their land was never taken. They, they had a free allotment of grain, so they didn't need to sell their land. You will see this in Egyptian history. There are inscriptions that describe the priests or the land, only ones who own the land. And there are inscriptions about uh, seven years of famine and seven years of plenty. Um, but Egyptian history is like a stew that's been stirred. Uh, it's been studied all along. Even since ancient times, Egyptian history has been a study of scholars. And all through the Dark Ages and, and um, during the Darwinian times, Egypt was studied and... Histor historians are slow to catch up and slow to accept new things. The entire Middle East has been rediscovered in Sumer and biblical ar archaeology has taken off like a rocket. But Egyptian history is still kind of bungled up and because there were many uh, dynasties that wiped out the previous dynasties and many overlapping dynasties. It's a very confluted history. There's actually too much of it all in one place. So it's very hard to uh, decipher a lot of it and the set dates. And, and some of the things that do line up with biblical events don't line up time-wise and some things are very uh, incredibly in tune with biblical events but not in the timeline and so then you got people saying well the Bible got it from the Egyptians um, this happens a lot in in history uh, we'll talk about that more later after we've talked about the Bible more and the history more. We'll go through more of the... With the Egyptian history, it's it's pretty much a lost cause, but with the Mesopotamian history, it's a little bit easier to understand why that happens and to, and to be able to figure it out. So as time went on, the people of Israel prospered in Egypt and 17 more years went by and Jacob was now... 147 years old and he felt like he was going to die and he called Joseph to come and see him and he made Joseph a uh, vow to him that he would not bury him in Egypt but that he would take him home to the land of his fathers and bury him so Joseph promised him that 
but he didn't die at that time. And then in Genesis chapter 48, Jacob uh, was dying and he was sick. And Joseph came to see him. And Joseph brought his two sons with him, Manasseh and Ephraim, the two sons to the Egyptian daughter of a priestess that he had with her. So then Jacob said to Joseph, he said, when I was in the land of Uz, or in the land, when I was in the land at Luz, which is Bethel, the God Almighty appeared to me, who is El Shaddai, God Almighty. And he told me, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and multiply you, and I will make you a company of nations, and I will give you this land for an everlasting possession. And now behold, your two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, shall be mine, even as my two sons, Reuben and Simon, are. Reuben and Simon are the two firstborn sons from his wife, Leah. So he's saying Ephraim and Manasseh will be as my two firstborn through Rachel instead of you. And every son after that will be yours, but these two will be mine. So in he's doing this as a way to double Joseph's prosperity. Um, he To make Joseph two sons to Jacob and Israel instead of one son, actually to Israel. He's making them two sons to Israel instead of one son to Israel. And Joseph didn't have any more children, not that are recorded in the Bible. So that's kind of irrelevant. But he made his two sons his own two sons, even as his first and second born. He then asked to see Joseph's sons. And Joseph brought his sons, and he put Manasseh at Israel's right hand and Ephraim at Israel's left hand. But Israel crossed his arms, and he put his right hand on Ephraim and his left hand on Manasseh. And then Israel blessed them, and he said to God Almighty, who redeemed me from all my troubles and who fed me all my life until this day. So he's taken that away from Joseph. You didn't feed me. God did. And... Bless these lads, and let my name be named upon them. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them become a multitude in the midst of the earth. Joseph then saw that he had crossed his hands, and he said, uh, No, you, you put your right hand goes on Manasseh. Manasseh is the older child. But Israel said to him, he said, No, Manasseh will also be a great nation, but his younger brother shall be much greater than him, and he shall be a multitude of nations. And we see this principle uh, described in the Bible of Reuben. See, in the, in the next chapter of Genesis, Jacob blesses his other sons and gives each of them a blessing. But he took away Reuben's blessing, the oldest, because he had lain with the concubine of Jacob or Israel. Uh, he laid with Rachel's maid. Um, and this principle is described in First Chronicles chapter 5, starting in verse 1, we read, now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for, mu but for so much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, 
the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckon, reckoned after the birthright. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright was Joseph's. And that was Bilhah, who he laid with. In Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, you can read about how Reuben laid with Bilhah. So the birthright was taken from Reuben, the firstborn, and given to Joseph. But it was split between Joseph's two sons. It was given to Manasseh and Ephraim. And Manasseh shall be a great nation, but Ephraim shall be a company of nations. In our next episode, we will talk about more about the history of Ephraim and Manasseh. We'll go through that a little bit. And you will see who these company of nations end up being. And this is uh, symbolized by Joseph's coat of many colors that uh, Jacob gave to him when he was young. So, I will see you in the next episode. Episode 17 about Ephraim and Manasseh. Thanks for joining the Christian Perspective channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing.